Hello everyone, welcome to the Department of Mechanical Engineering and the National Institute of Engineering. Uh, you guys have already gone through your induction program, so I'm not going to bore you with information of the department or the college. So what we do is straight away jump into Mechanical Engineering Sciences. That is the course you'll be studying in your first year, which deals with the world of Mechanical Engineering. The course, as I said, is Mechanical Engineering Sciences. This deals with the role of a mechanical engineer in the modern world. Before we actually get into what a mechanical engineer does, we need to define what an engineer is. An engineer is a person who has the ability to design, create and build numerous things. It might be anything. It might be a civil engineer building roads, bridges and highways and the like. It might be an electrical engineer who is going to set up an entire electric uh, electric rig for an entire city or it might be a mechanical engineer who builds engines, it might be a computer science engineer who is going to build a software that is designed to run all the equipment that the other kinds of engineers have actually done. So all of this has to happen in a scientific process and that is the key thing. Anybody can just, it's the, it's the difference between you cooking at home and Sanjeev Kapoor cooking for a hotel. It is a repetitive, scientific, iterative process which sets an engineer apart from the rest of the people. So this is what you have to keep in mind whenever you are trying to talk about what you guys are doing as engineers and what your role as engineering students is. It is a scientific process which is iterative. It is a process which can be repeatable. It's not that engineering students at NIE get taught something else compared to other engineering colleges. It is the same throughout the world. So this was what you have to keep in mind. That definition I just gave you uh, for, a for an engineer is actually pretty vague and pretty generic. Uh, if you try to focus it down to mechanical engineers in particular, and I apologize because I'm going to use a sheet for the first time. A mechanical engineer is going to work on electricity producing generators, internal combustion engines, steam turbines, gas turbines, jet engines, rocket engines, refrigeration systems, air conditioning systems, robotics, equipment used in manufacturing, machine tools, material handling equipment, industrial production equipment, medical equipment, cars, bikes, planes, boats and every single form of transport you've ever thought of, bicycles and even the tiny little scooters children use construction equipment, construction materials, plastic production, oil refinery and its related equipment. So the, basically the list is endless and obviously it's very hard to keep track of everything. But essentially, as long as you are using something that is not naturally available, as long as it's basically not air, water and the plants outside, it has to involve a mechanical engineer. Everything that is man-made, everything that is not naturally available is created by mechanical engineer and that is what we are going to talk about in your course. Mechanical engineering and the course that we are trying to teach you is split in three ways. First is how we harness energy, so energy is available in nature and how do we use that energy to convert it into useful mechanical work. Second is how we transmit that energy. Obviously let's say we use solar energy to create electricity. But how are you going to use that electricity? You are going to collect it to an electric motor and run, let's say, a mixie at home. So that is what we mean by transmitting energy. How does the energy from the, from the electric motor get transmitted to the blades of the mixie? That is the second part of your subject. And the final part of your subject deals with how these machines that we have created with the capability of harnessing naturally available energy, how are we going to put those machines into work? How are we making the camera that is recording the video right now? How are we going to make the mobile phone or the electronic device you are using to watch this video? So every that portion is called manufacturing processes. So these are broadly your, the ways in which we have split your curriculum. The first one deals with systems like these, solar panels which use naturally available sunlight to convert into electricity. Uh, even colleges like NIE are so dependent on alternative resources like this that the panels that are here on the roof of the administrative block, which hopefully you'll get to see soon, and the boys hostel provide about 40% of our electrical needs. So across the college, uh, in this video and in others, I'll show you the different ways in which we are trying to harness naturally available energy and convert it into electricity. 
or it may be systems like these. This is a biomass gasifier plant. Basically, it uses waste from the kitchens in the college canteens or the mess in the boys' hostel. That is fed into the uh, large bucket like the arrangement you see here, which gets converted into methane, and that methane is used to either run the engines in the internal combustion engine laboratory from which we can get mechanical work, or it can be fed back right down to the canteens, which will be used to cook food. Next, we move on to stuff like this. This, for example, is an internal combustion engine. This is a cutaway section of the diesel engine. Okay, so we have, we, in the curriculum, we'll talk about how diesel engines work, we'll talk about how petrol engines work, we'll talk about how electrical systems are used in transportation devices. That is the, the first, uh, first part. Then, we move on to devices like this, which is a transmission system. So we talk about how energy that we get from a petrol engine like this or any sort of prime mover as we call it is transmitted to its destination. So it might be on a set of uh, gears like this which you can clearly see here or it might be something as simple as a simple pulley system where you have a belt and a couple of pulleys. So this kind of pulley systems are normally used in your mopeds, your scooties, your activas and your deals whereas a transmission system like this with gears, multiple gears and its own gear, its own uh, levers and all, they are used in very large vehicles like cars, buses and the like. So in the last chapter, we will study something called manufacturing processes, which deals with machines like this, the lathe, which can convert a cylindrical component like this into something like this. You can clearly see there is a difference between the uncut material and the cut material. You have got a threaded element here, you have got a tapered section here and the rest. So your last chapter is going to deal with how these machines are utilized to create products. So it is going to deal with machine tools, it is going to be dealing with processes like casting, welding, soldering and the like. Before we move on with the video, uh, I would like just to talk about where we are. This is the Department of Mechanical Engineering's uh, machine shop where we have conventional lathes like this. These lathes actually have been continuously used since the 1960s. Then you have the foundry section at the back where we will come back to in the next video or so where we will talk about the different manufacturing processes. We have more lathes, we have shapers, we have got milling machines, drilling machines and grinding machines as well. And all the stuff behind the glass you can see is our modern cutting edge section of the workshop. You have a center of automation technology which houses its own anthropomorphic robot and flexible manufacturing system and you have the CNC training center which is a one of a kind center in the region which trains students like you on uh, modern computer controlled manufacturing machines. The CNC center also acts as a hub for the uh, student activities in the department like the racing teams and the like. Before we end this video, I just like put, would like to talk about where I actually am right now. Uh, we are in the workshop of the NIE ISHA Center for Automobile Technology. This is a class leading center that is available in very few colleges in the country. And I think in South India, this was the first center that was set up in collaboration with Volvo ISHA. So what you have here, and if the and if Vikram can pan, you can clearly see you have a very vast array of engines. These engines may be the cutaway sections I was talking about a second ago or it might be completely built engines that are available. So this is a center in which students and professionals who are interested in automotive engineering get a chance to work physically on machines like this. So what you see now is an entire row of diesel engines which when you come here you can actually take apart and put back together as part of your training program. Then you can see the tools you'll be using in any sort of training program. You have test rigs for electrical systems and you have, it's so the center has its own individual classrooms as well. And this is why the Department of Mechanical Engineering at NIE is special because we have access to class leading equipment and class leading centers which help make, make our students or our graduates the best in the field. This has just been a brief introduction into 
the course on mechanical engineering sciences. Ideally, if you guys were here on campus, most of your teachers would have taken you to all these centers we've just shown you, where we would talk about how engines work, or how a lathe works, we would physically take you to all these places where you could, in some cases, you could have gotten a chance to work on these machines. Unfortunately, in the present circumstances, that is not possible. That is the entire idea behind these series of videos. We are going to try to make sure, we are going to make sure that we take you virtually to as many places as possible. So any technology that is available in the college relating to your curriculum, we'll take you there, we'll make videos and we'll put it up online so that when you actually are in college in a few months time, you'll have an opportunity to have a look at them and work on them on your own. And uh, your rest of your classes will probably be a blend of online and offline classes. So we'll use those to cover curriculum and any other video like this is always going to be a bonus for you. Until I see you next time, take care of yourself. Bye.